So let's have a look at the envelope first. Oh, this is really nice. You can definitely tell, I can definitely tell that this client listened to my uh, suggestion. All of you must see this and I hope that whoever is watching this who thinks about sending work here will follow these steps. You see um, how the client took corrugated pieces of cardboard and the envelope is in between. That's specifically to prevent something like this from happening. This envelope came in last week. You see this paper envelope? It had a flash drive in it. And it came in with this hole right here. All we got was an envelope and a form from the client inside of that envelope, but no flash drive. So unfortunately, there's not much we can recover from something like this. But this client sent it also in the same envelope, but took no, because I explained it needs to be protected and surrounded with something that will keep it from falling apart. This is perfect way to send a flash drive, a memory card, or small object, because it gives it, you know, extra bulk. Even if uh, this tore open, chances are something big like this would not fall out. So let's have a look at what is in the actual envelope. Judging by the case, it's a CF card. Lexar 64 gigabyte UDMA 7 compact flash. Lexar Professional. Sent to us from Texas. I appreciate it. We see these quite often. They, they come in frequently, not because they're bad, it's just it's a popular brand and a popular device used by many. So inside of this enclosure, what we have is a um, printed circuit board that operates uh, four memory components uh, using this silicone motion controller. So uh, we're going to mark them, remove the chips, and read each chip individually, save the information off of them into binary file, and then reconstruct it as one volume to see the virtual image and see the virtual structure so that we can start copying files out. Okay, so the first thing I always do with uh, any type of memory device, I mark the chips in their priority order. So this is gonna be our chip number one. This is going to be chip number two. I'm going to turn this upside down. This is going to be chip number three. And this is going to be chip number four. I'll use a little bit of a flux because that only helps desoldering process. So I'm generously going to apply it all around the perimeter. Of memory components I'm gonna do it one by one and I'm also gonna turn on the preheater to 300 after this is marked we can just set it aside I have to switch the nozzle out because right now it's set for smaller components so this is what that nozzle looks like it's just got a bigger tip on it basically the heat comes from this square and blows down straight at the chip before our preheater gets too hot it's a good idea to put this thing on and make sure that it's nice and tight in there. that's it now we just gotta wait until the bottom area is warm enough Once the temperature reaches 700 degrees, I'll start suspending it down and uh, that will begin melting the solder.
So chip two is down, chip three goes in. And last but not least, the chip number four. By importing them into the software here, we can view the binary information inside of each one of these eight parts. So because we had four chips and each chip had two parts to it, the total number of pieces comes up to eight. Now eight of those pieces need to be mixed using a specific pattern, uh, which we already have, uh, in order to form a structure that can be viewed and browsed. So by uh, looking at eight of these pieces, we don't have any uh, files to just take out from there until that algorithm is applied. So if we apply the algorithm, we begin to see the chain of data conversion elements that take place in order to convert raw data into structured data that we see here at the end, browse. So if we scroll through, that's basically what the data will be appearing like. Maybe we can catch some glimpse. There's something that kind of looked like Fat table. There. Uh, it's so easy to. There. Well, this reveals some something resembles the fat tables. But anyways, we're just gonna go uh, straight into the assembler. And using the model that we already had uh, for this specific device. Uh, Currently, the software is scanning the entire chain of uh, yeah. The scanning process is still moving along. We just gotta wait till it's finished up. Okay, so as the scanning is finished, I'm going to go ahead and open the image now. There's our master boot record. The fat table seems to be corrupt. Now, that can be for several reasons. Uh, most likely what this issue is all about is that our uh, boot record appears to be empty. There's nothing in there. So we could go ahead and try and find it on the disk, but there is a simple way that I'm going to use it. I'm just going to go ahead and exit from here. I'm just going to close this up. And I'm going to select Save Image and hit Save. Now we just gotta wait till the image is saved. Once uh, the image is saved, we're gonna go into another software that is allow, uh, allowing us to uh, work with the image. So let's go ahead and uh, open that up. Results reveal that there are 35 over 3500 uh, JPEGs on this device. Zip files, I'm not really gonna pay attention to that. Usually they don't mean much. Now the next step of scanning will actually reveal the condition of those files. So if they are corrupt, they're gonna be highlighted. If they're corrupt but still open up, they're gonna be highlighted. And if they're perfectly intact, they will also be highlighted. So let's see what the final results will show.
So as you can see, the thumbnails are appearing. I have to blur them out because uh, obviously because it's private. And um, let's try to open up one of these images here on the screen uh, and blur it some more. As you can see it's a picture. It opens up. There's no problems with it. And uh, these pictures are being saved as I'm showing it to you right now. So uh, there is uh, over 3,000 of them are going to be saving and uh, I'm going to generate a preview of thumbnails for the client and send it for approval. But hopefully everything went fine and as you guys could see this is a sure way to recover data from the device that is completely not recognized by any of type of uh, equipment, uh, digital cameras, computers, card readers, etc. So if you need data recovery services on one of your devices like this, Feel free to contact us. Information how to reach us is in the description as well as on the screen right now. Subscribe to this channel. Hit like if you like this video. I really appreciate you taking time to watch this. Stay tuned for more. I'll see you next time.